his college football what if that could shape the 2024 season is what if the only guy to beat Georgia in the last three seasons just retired and now Georgia is essentially unstoppable <coughs> so what he's saying here is Nick Saban just retired and he's the only dude who's beaten Georgia these last three years also worth noting the two uh, losses that he handed Kirby Smart were both in the SEC title game so regular season nobody's beaten Georgia according to these last uh, or uh, when you look at these last three years I had a double take at this but I think it's a fair it's a fair question it's a fair question like all right you got the greatest of all time and outside of that nobody else is really holding the candle to Georgia when you look at what they've done from a win-loss perspective now to be fair the schedule in 2024 in my opinion for Georgia is the more difficult schedule than they've had these last three seasons like the road show in itself is wild you're at Bama you're at Texas you're at Ole Miss at Kentucky also a little bit more sneaky than I think it sounds and then the other tough games you got you got Auburn still you still got Tennessee and oh by the way just kind of drop this in there uh, you open with Clemson in Atlanta which will not be a walkover game anyway it's also worth noting now, as much as you talk about Georgia, the success they've had the last couple of seasons, and they've had a ton of it, especially during the regular season, Georgia's shown some signs of humanity at different points throughout Kirby Smart's uh, last couple of years. They trailed at Missouri a couple of years ago. They were in a rock fight in like a really disgusting, rainy game against Kentucky. Uh, last year, Auburn took them to the wire. Like, it's college football. That's why we tune in every Saturday, because anything could happen. So to, to say that Nick Saban is the only one that's beat Kirby Smart isn't incorrect, but there have been teams that have been in position to try and capitalize on some leverage over Georgia, and then Georgia does what Georgia does, and they find a way to get it done. I think it's also worth noting, when we talk about Georgia and the, the potential for obstacles in 2024, this is going to be a, a new... Uh, what, what's the, what's the, the another, uh, another version now of Kirby Smart staff. This is the next revolution for him. That's the word I was looking for. This is another revolution for Kirby Smart at Georgia with new faces on his staff. You got a new wide receiver coach, a new Cody C, new running back coach, new secondary coach. Like there's a lot of new faces. And that's kind of what we had seen over the course of Alabama and Nick Saban's dynasty was, hey, when you have success, People see that on your staff. They say, how can we get some of that on our team? How can we get some of that process, that blueprint over with our school? And then people hire your coordinators, your position coaches, whatever. I understand Will Muschamp stepped back, so he wasn't hired away. That's the cost of success. So can you duplicate your previous success with new faces on your staff? It's also worth noting. I keep saying worth noting. It's also a talking point here as in 2024, Georgia loses some production on defense. Now they still have a ton of talent, but there will be some guys that are going to be stepping into roles that they haven't stepped into before throughout the course of an entire season. So that you don't have to go looking for obstacles for Georgia. Like it's all there from the roster to the schedule to what they have uh, on the coaching staff. Like there, there's a lot of, I think, talking points for why Georgia could have some, some issues this upcoming season. Now with that being said, I think 2024, regardless of Nick Saban, regardless of Alabama, college football and where Georgia is right now is perfectly aligned for the dogs to just go on a run. Like everything about what Georgia has in front of them, I believe favors them outside of that schedule. I'll talk about this more right now. Like even with the new staff, because that's going to be an acclimation process, no way around it. I still feel great about the most important facets of this football team when it comes to winning national championships. What did we say yesterday? Depth and quarterback play. Georgia has elite depth. They've racked up five-star classes over the course of the last three seasons. And they've got, I think, one of the best, if not the best quarterbacks in America in Carson Beck. On the line of scrimmage, we just said it a second ago, big people move small people. Georgia, I think if you were to take the overall average of their defensive and offensive line in terms of how they stack up against the rest of America... I would take both their, their lines. Like, line of scrimmage play is not going to be an issue for Georgia in 2024. And so with that being the case, you also look at the way the college football playoff has is, is changed, and we've sort of beat this drum for a while here. Georgia used to have a more narrow path to the national championship. Now, they would walk it. Now, don't get it twisted. They walked it to the tune of two national championships. 
But now Georgia has a couple of different ways to get to that ultimate goal. Like Georgia, they could go and lose at Texas and at Alabama and I think still have a pretty good chance to make the college football playoff. And the only thing that I think is as scary as Georgia getting in the college football playoff undefeated with a bye is if Georgia finds themselves in that five spot. Saying, J.D., in the five spot, in the five spot. Andy Staples made a tremendous point when he was on this show this time last week, and I want to tell you about it right now. If Georgia plays in the five spot, who do they draw round one? Number 12, right? Well, who's that number 12 team going to be? Who's the 12th seed? I think conventional wisdom would tell you it's a G5 school. Is a G5 school hanging around for more than 15 minutes with Georgia in a four-quarter game? No disrespect to the G5. I love the G5. But you line it up with Georgia, it's not going to be close. It's not going to be close. So you play that game. And then the next round, who do you play? You would play the four seed. So a conference champion who, if we're using, again, conventional wisdom, using logic here, it's probably not going to be an SEC champ or a Big Ten champ. So you're probably drawing a school from the Big 12 or the ACC. And I'm not telling you the right matchup couldn't give Georgia problems, but I do think you would much rather play a school from the ACC or the Big 12 than an at-large bid from the SEC or the Big Ten in that 8 or 9 spot from a bye than you would in that number 4 spot from that second round game. So you're probably drawing, if we're using Andy Staples' uh, projection from yesterday or earlier this week around the 12-team field, Georgia would draw Kansas State. I love, I love Kansas State. I love Avery Johnson. Uh, Georgia would drag Kansas State. I'm just going to tell you right now. They would drag Kansas State. And so that would put Georgia in a spot where they can go compete for a national championship yet again. And also, if they have lost a couple games and find themselves in that five spot, even if they lose one game. We talk about this a lot with Georgia. They don't need to have any extra juice manufactured this year. They didn't win the national title last year. They're in chase mode. They're always in chase mode, but even more so this year because this group wants to go out with a national title of their own. A lot of guys played on that national title team against TCU. They didn't have the starting role necessarily they're going to have this year. Carson Beck most notably. So if you give them a little extra chip on their shoulder because they drop a game they weren't supposed to or they have more sense of urgency, that's going to favor Georgia and Kirby Smart and the way that he does things 15 out of 10 times. So not so much about Saban retiring is dangerous for college football. I think it's more so just the overall path and the course ahead of them. Are there some question marks on the schedule? Some question marks with you know, having to put together a new staff and make it all mesh accordingly. Of course, that's not a little thing. But I do think the roster talent, the most important spots on your roster with quarterback and the line of scrimmage, those are all solid to me. You add in the weapons, you add in the internal motivation factor, you add in the playoff structure, like Georgia's going to be a problem. And we're not making a prediction just yet because I've told y'all many times it's not yet prediction season. It is call your shot season. This is neither of those. I am just warning y'all. I am going to... Have to have to really search my soul, really search the innermost part of my heart to not pick Georgia to win a national championship when it comes time for us to make our predictions. That's not a, it's not a prediction just yet, but I'm just telling you, as we sit here in the middle of June, that's the way I'm leaning. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.